Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Uh, this is a booktube darling young adult about death days, uh, about Matteo and Rufus. So I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out the tabs that I've got so far, and I will continue doing that until I finish it and give my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... On September the 5th, a little after midnight, Deathcast calls Matteo Torres and Rufus Cimiterio to give them some bad news. They're going to die today. Matteo and Rufus are total strangers, but for different reasons, they're both looking to make a new friend on their end day. The good news, there's an app for that. It's called The Last Friend, and through it, Rufus and Matteo are about to meet up for one last great adventure, to live a lifetime in a single day. So, let's check out the blurbs. I do like the blackness to it. It actually reminded me of Death Note, the black editions. We have like this quote here, part one, Deathcast. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, that's all. Oscar Wilde. So, some tabbies. This I related to, because uh, I have death anxiety. I've always been afraid of dying. I don't know why I thought this would jinx it from actually happening. Not forever, obviously, but long enough so I could grow up. Dad has even been drilling it into my head that I should pretend I'm the main character of a story that nothing bad ever happens to, most especially death, because the hero has to be around to save the day. But the noise in my head is quieting down and there's a death cast herald on the other end of the phone waiting to tell me I'm going to die today at 18 years old. And uh, also fun little factoid here. I just breathe because I have fewer than 28,000 breaths left in me. The average number of breaths a non-dying person takes per day. And I might as well use them up while I can. And um, here we just get some stuff about uh, like sleep sounds basically. I've actually heard the equivalent of this. Um, uh, you'll see in a minute the sound of the planets, um, but also I, I relate to it because I listen to sleep sounds to fall asleep. A couple years ago, some NASA team created this special instrument to record the sounds of different planets. I know it sounded weird to me too, especially because of all the movies I've watched telling me about how there isn't sound in space. Except there is, it just exists in magnetic vibrations. NASA converted the sounds so the human ear could hear them, and even though I was hiding out in my room, I stumbled on something magical from the universe, something those who don't follow what's trending online would miss out on. Some of the planets sound ominous, like something you'd find in a science fiction movie set in some alien world. Alien world is in world with aliens, not non-Earth world. Neptune sounds like a fast current. Saturn has this terrifying howling to it that I never listen to anymore. And the same goes for Uranus, except there are harsh winds whistling that sound like spaceships firing lasers at each other. The sounds of the planets make for a great conversation starter if you have people to talk to. But if you don't, they make for great white noise when you're going to sleep. I thought this was interesting and a logical extension of, um, of what would happen. The Last Friend app is designed for lonely deckers and for any good soul who wants to keep a decker company in their final hours. This isn't to be confused with Necro, which is intended for anyone who wants a one night stand with a decker, the ultimate no strings attached app. I've always been so disturbed by Necro, and not just because sex makes me nervous. But no, the Last Friend app was created so people can feel worthy and loved before they die. There are no user charges, unlike Necro, which goes for $7.99 a day, which disturbs me because I can't help but feel as if a human is worth more than 8 bucks. Depends on which human. And I love this, I actually said this to my, my other half, Shay. The really great chat I had with Francis when we were the last two awake about how instead of complimenting and attractive anyone on their looks, my pickup line should be more personal because anyone can have pretty eyes, but only the right kind of person can hum the alphabet and make it your new favorite beat. So we have some good quotes at the start of each section. Uh, so here at the part two, the last friend, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. John A. Shedd, another great line. He once told me that stories can make someone immortal as long as someone else is willing to listen. We get a reference to him humming Take This Waltz by the late Leonard Cohen. Uh, Leonard Cohen being one of my favourite singer-songwriters. It's crazy to me that he died before this book came out, considering I've known about this book for ages. And I love this, uh, just a minor character, Delilah. When asked by the hairdresser what she wanted, Delilah asked for the Aurora Borealis treatment. The combination of pink, purple, green and blue needs some touch-ups, but that can wait until next week after she catches up on assignments. And as you guys will know, if you follow in my channel, I went to Iceland recently to try and see the Aurora. Didn't, so we're going to try in Norway instead, I think. And we get references about uh, pay phones are going to stop being a thing. I don't even know anyone's phone number. I only know dads and Lydia's, Matteo says. If I was locked up behind bars, I would have been extra screwed. Knowing someone's number isn't going to matter anyway. You'll no longer be a quarter away from calling someone. I hold up my phone. I'm not even using a real camera. Cameras that use film are going extinct too. Watch. Post offices and handwritten letters are next, Matteo says. Movie rental stores and DVD players, I say. Landlines and answering machines, he says. Newspapers, I say. Clocks and wristwatches. I'm sure someone's working on a product for us to automatically know the time. But like, cameras that use film arguably already have gone extinct. Uh, so have movie stores and uh, DVD players. I mean, this came out in 2017. And by then, Netflix had already killed Blockbuster. And I'm kind of unsure about when this is meant to be set. Because the idea of this app or whatever, I would assume that means it's meant to be in the future. 
given that we don't have the technology to know when people are going to die i don't know i don't also i'm assuming it's not addressed i haven't got to the end yet but it's not been mentioned how it works and i love this when i finally finish in the middle of a conversation with rufus about how his parents almost named him kane after his mother's favorite wrestler my eyes close and my head drops uh, Kane was one of my favourite wrestlers too, um, but also I have a cousin called Kane and he wasn't named after the wrestler. I think my uncle just liked the cadence of Dane and was like, we're going to use a K instead. Oh, and this is kind of interesting as well. Uh, so they go to visit um, um, the dude's mum. I can't remember which character. Uh, I shut up because we've reached the corner and in the space beside my mother's plot, there's a man digging another grave while a caretaker installs a headstone with my name and dates of birth and death. I'm not even dead yet. I know graves can be dug on an accelerated schedule, but it's only been 11 hours since I even got the alert. I know my final headstone won't be ready for days, but the temporary one isn't what's throwing me off. No one should ever witness someone digging their grave. I mean, I guess it happens in murder documentaries and stuff. Okay, in the quote at the part, beginning of part three, the beginning, it is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Marcus Aurelius, Roman Emperor. And I just love that because I know a little bit about Aurelius because I'm interested in Stoic philosophy. It's actually not my favourite Stoic. He's most people's favourite Stoic. I'm more of a Seneca man. Um, we get a reference to Blind Date with a book and uh, also the line, I've only had crushes, but it's embarrassing to admit they were characters in books and TV shows, which to me just made me think this is definitely written for the booktube audience. Those two things right there. And Matteo says, uh, I was nine when I bothered my dad about love. I wanted to know if it was under the couch or high up in the closet where I couldn't reach it. He didn't say that love is within or love is all around you. Rufus wheels his bike beside me as we pass this gym. I'm hooked. What did he say? That love is a superpower we all have, but it's not always a superpower I'd be able to control, especially as I get older. Sometimes it'll go crazy and I shouldn't be scared if my power hits someone I'm not expecting it to. My face is warm and I wish I had the superpower of common sense because this isn't something I should have ever said out loud. I just thought that was actually very beautiful, very mature for the character. And we get this as well from one of the characters, Deirdre, who works at Make a Moment, which is like make a wish but with VR for people who, are, who know they're going to die. Um, and I can't help but wondering whether Adam Silvera actually plans to write this story himself. The boys from earlier reminded her of a short story she'd finished working on this morning. Something for her eyes only that has kept her distracted in the quiet times at work. Her story is set in an alternate world where Deathcast has another branch called Lifecast and this extension informs Deckers of when they will be reincarnated so their families and friends will know how to find them in their next life. It's centred around 15 year old twin sisters, Angel and Skylar, who are devastated to learn one twin is about to die and immediately seek out Lifecast services to find out when Skylar will be reincarnated. Angel is upset because she won't be reunited with her sister for another seven years, when Skylar will be reincarnated as the son of some family in Australia. Skylar dies saving her sister's life and it ends with a devastated angel depositing a hundred dollar bill into an old piggy bank to start funding her way to Australia in seven years to welcome her sister back into the world, albeit as an infant boy. So you have here the quote for the end is a Steve Jobs quote. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. It's kind of more poignant, you know, given that, that Jobs is dead now as well. All right, and this teenage kid, he loves uh, Vienna by Billy Joel, Tomorrow Tomorrow by Elliot Smith, and Born to Run by uh, Bruce Springsteen. And they just seem like very odd songs. And like at a, a teenager at this um, karaoke night sings a, so a fond farewell by Elliot Smith. They just don't strike me as songs that like 15 year olds or whatever would enjoy. Again, someone sings Because the Night by Patti Smith. Try a Little Tenderness by Otis Redding. Oh, and we get um, a reference to American Pie being eight minutes long, which I guess it is, I don't know. If it is, I've only ever heard the radio version. And we get an interview with the guy from Scorpius Hawthorne. He has a Scorpius Hawthorne-like wound um, and he's playing uh, Draconian Marsh. So definitely Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter then. And Matteo says, I, I miss when I was so young I didn't know to be afraid of death. I even miss yesterday when I was paranoid and not actually dying. I, I'm pretty sure those are the experiences I'm gonna, the emotions I'm gonna feel on my deathbed. And then the kids say they love each other. And they've only known each other for a day. They do talk about it. People have their timestamps on how long you should know someone before earning the right to say it. But I wouldn't lie to you no matter how little time we have. People waste time and wait for the right moment and we don't have that luxury. And I just, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, they both die at the end by Adam Silvera. Silvera. Overall pretty good, probably like a 3.5 out of 5. I do think it's a little bit overhyped, um, but I can see why people enjoy it, I suppose. Um, and yes, 
I, I did enjoy it. I won't be reading any more Adam Silvera in the immediate future unless I come across one that I really want to get to. Um, but yes, if, if what I've said sounds like your cup of tea, do check it out. So there we have it. That's what I made of They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.